Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? This is Toby with Online Security, and we are back with another Cert Master Lab for Security Plus 701. In this lab here, we're going to be going over hardening, okay? We're going to be going over hardening. Remember, this term hardening simply means to make something more secure. So we're going to go through a few hardening techniques. Let's get right to it. All right, first things first, let's switch over to MS10. We're going to log into MS10 as Jamie. You know his username, you know his password. Let's log in. Right now, after we log in, the first thing that we have to do is to open the device manager and scan for hardware changes. So we're gonna open up the device manager, just go into the search bar, type in device, manager, and boom. This is gonna open up for us. And we wanna scan for hardware changes. So just right click on MS10 and select scan for hardware changes. You'll see all the changes here. All right, next, we wanna disable then enable the Microsoft Virtual DVD ROM. That's going to be under this option here, right? We're going to just expand this option, right? This option right here, if you can't see it, and what we're going to do is just right click on it and disable it. Hit yes. Then we're going to right click on it again and then enable it. Why are we doing this? Well, maybe you you scanned and you found some type of device that shouldn't be enabled on your system. Well, this is how you can harden your your host. To, by disabling that hardware. All right, cool. So we did that. All right, disable then enable. Next, we want to uninstall this DVD ROM. So we're going to right click it and select uninstall. Select OK. All right, question Which device driver management function will prevent the use of a device even after rebooting or rescanning for hardware? That's going to be disabled. All right, once you disable it, it cannot be used. Make sure you check your work. Make sure you've done all these things. If you need to open up this, these guides for hints, please do that, right? They're pretty useful even if you want to just, even if you already know it, right? It's, it's pretty useful, pretty informative. All right, next, we're still on the MS-10 machine, right? Now we're gonna remove unnecessary applications. This is another hardening technique. There are gonna be certain applications on your system that you don't need, right? Especially if no one is using it. Well, it should be removed, remove, remove, remove. If no one is using that application, remove it, especially if you're on a server. All right, so we're gonna go to pro, we're gonna use program features to remove this CPU ID program. So we're just gonna go to the search and we're gonna look for programs and features. There we go. Fortunately, we can see it right here. Okay, we're gonna right click this and select uninstall. Select yes, and that is it. Next, we're gonna remove the FTP service using remove roles and features. So we need the server manager for that. So we're gonna open up the server manager application. Now, once again, what are we doing, you all? We are hardening our system. So to find server manager, we're just going to look into the search bar and type in server. You can see the server manager app. We're going to open this up and we're going to use remove roles and features to remove the FTP service. FTP is unsecure. It uses port 2021. It using those port doesn't make it unsecure. It's the fact that FTP is unencrypted is what makes it unsecure, right? That traffic that FTP is using back and forth is not encrypted. So let's go to manage, right? Over here on manage, we see add roles and features and we see remove roles and features let's select remove roles and features we're going to hit next we're going to scroll down you see web server iis let's go ahead and expand this and deselect ftp server that's going to remove it select next select next select remove you can see what's being removed here you can restart this if you want to i'm not going to restart it but select remove question if you need to install or reinstall a Windows feature or server, which utility should be used? We want to use the server manager. Oh, actually add roles and features. Sorry, 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 sorry. Add roles and feature wizard, right? Which is in, which is within the server manager. All right, this answer right here is way more specific than just server manager. All right, cool. We're going to go on to the next section while that is removing itself. Now we're going to manipulate host file names resolution. So we're going to be interacting with Kali and specifically the Etsy host folder or Etsy host file. While this is doing its thing, I'm going to switch over to the Kali box. We're going to log in. 
You know the username, you know the password. Let's get to it. All right, so what do they want us to do? They want us to open up a terminal and use wget to visit juiceshop.local. Too easy. We're gonna open up this terminal and we're gonna use the wget command, juiceshop.local. All right, this is gonna download the juiceshop.local webpage. We can see that right here. It's stored it inside of index.html. How do we know that? Because that's what they told us here. All right, next, it says, view the contents of the current Etsy host file. Too easy. I'm gonna clear my screen and we're gonna cat open the Etsy host file. We can see the contents. We can see Juice Shop right here. All right, Juice Shop is pointed to 228. All right, what do they want us to do next? They want us to introduce a name resolution error by editing the host file. So they want us to put in the incorrect IP address. So we're gonna switch 228 with 249. Too easy. Let's use V or Vim. We're gonna do the same command from earlier, but we're gonna open it up with a note editor, right? Where I'm gonna use VI. VI forward slash SE forward slash host. Don't forget the space in between the VI and Etsy host. Hit enter. Now I have this file open. All right, there are other text editors you can use to do this. All right now, if we want to be able to edit this, we have to hit the letter I. Okay, we're going to hit the letter I, backspace, switch this to 249, hit your escape key, and then hit the colon, shift colon, WQ to save it. All right, I'll do that one more time. We're going to go in here. If you want to edit it, you have to hit the I key on your keyboard, the letter I. Right now we can edit it. Now to save it, we have to hit the escape key and then we have to hold shift colon so we can get this down here. We wanna see that colon down there, shift colon. And then afterwards, we're gonna type in the letters WQ. It saves our file. Make sure that it was saved, cat it open. And we can see that right there, good to go. Now, next. Question, what is the proper syntax for entries in the SE host file? That's gonna be IP address, then full, then FQDN. All right, now we're gonna use wget again to try to get that web page. This is not gonna work, why? Because it's not able to resolve that host, right? If you're not familiar with how DNS works, I highly recommend that you register for our Security Fundamentals Academy. DNS, when we're trying to go to juice shop that local, we're looking in our Etsy host file. We're asking the Etsy host file for that IP address. Right now, it's a bad IP address in there that we gave it. This is not the correct IP, right? So that's why we're not able to wget that website anymore. Cool. Now, we're gonna switch it back after all to the Etsy host. So we're gonna switch it back to 228. So let's go back and be, and open up that file with V. We hit I, two, two, eight. Hit escape, shift colon, WQ. Good. Let's make sure that the changes are there. Sweet, we're good to go. Now we're gonna use the wget command one more time and we can see that we're able to resolve that domain. We're able to resolve juice shop that local because we have the correct IP address now. Question, what features or capabilities can be obtained through editing the SE host file? Well, we can redirect queries to preferred DNS servers. No, redirect to a function of site, block resolution, force resolution. Uh, let's see, redirect to a different function of site, block resolution to the correct IP address, force resolution to a preferred IP address, redirect. There we go. It's okay to get them wrong, y'all. As long as you know why you got it wrong, it is okay to get it wrong. It is okay. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. It's fine. Don't beat yourself up on it. All right. So we're going to leave the terminal and go to the next section. Oh, all right. Sweet. Comprehensive questions. What are two primary aspects of system hardening? Well, it's to remove bad things and to update, remove applications that are not necessary and update applications that need to get updated. Which of the following, following are important aspects that may be performed by hardening a system? Removing unneeded devices, installing updates, removing insecure services, setting firewall rules, adjusting DNS resolution, uninstalling itself, all of these, right? All of these are gonna help harden our system. In other words, it's gonna help make our systems more secure. What are the two means by which you can access the add roles feature? We can use the server manager and programs and feature. Why should you consider altering the host file? 
to distribute a new FQDN to IP mapping, not publicly, to remove a false FQDN, yeah, force the resolution of an FQDN, yes, to prevent, yes. All right, we got that one right. <laughs> Sometimes a, a native or default application device driver or protocol needs to be removed when hardening a system. This is true, all right? That is true. Good job, you all. We just went through some hardening techniques. These are real, real hardening techniques that you can do at home. These are hardening techniques that you can do in the workplace for your organization, for your company. Go over this lab. This is a very, very, very useful a useful skill set that is being used in the real world, right? Hardening, you're making your host more secure. You also want to harden your network. You want to make your network more secure. You want to remove unused ports. You want to make sure that you're using secure protocols. Go over this lab over and over and over. If you're enjoying this series, please don't forget to smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave a comment on how we're doing. If you have any questions, we'd love to get back to you. Love to read your comments. Other than that, I will see you in the next video. Peace.